So we looked at glycolysis from several viewpoints, but there's one other aspect we want to look at, and that's when other sugars enter the pathway. So typically we look at glycolysis as glucose, but uh, in some cases other sugars will go in. So first we got galactose, and of course this picture has a big X, I'm going to explain that in a second, but galactose, when it's absorbed, it gets uh, it goes through a couple of uh, processes um, which will eventually bring it to glucose 6-phosphate uh, so that it can be used in glycolysis. Uh, the reason this X is here is because in galactosemia, there's actually classical and non-classical, but it, in galactosemia, one of the two enzymes involved in converting galactose into glucose 6-phosphate is, uh, is deficient and you get a buildup of galactose in the blood. Now mannose and fructose um, they can both be converted into fructose 6-phosphate, however with fructose that only occurs in the muscles. In the liver, which the liver is the primary source of metabolism for fructose, most fructose goes into the liver, some goes in the muscle. But in the liver it gets converted into glyceraldehyde phosphate. Now here's a key time when we can go and look back at a, a little thing we did earlier with glycogen storage disease. So if you remember glycogen storage disease type 1, you have a problem converting glucose 6-phosphate back into glucose. Now, in glycogen storage disease type 1, and, and actually in most glycogen storage disease, you, don't, uh, you try your best not to consume any of these sugars. You try your best actually to consume um, a, a, a starchy uh, food such as a cornstarch, and that is because it will release glucose slowly over time into the blood and will prevent it from, uh, when it's released slowly, the blood sugar remains constant, then you don't have a whole bunch of it getting taken into the liver and converted into glucose 6-phosphate. However, the problem is with these other sugars, they, um, they'll go, the only path they can go to is either glucose 6-phosphate or anywhere below that pathway. There is no other pathway for these to get converted into glucose, and so it's pretty bad for uh, anyone with a glycogen storage disease to, to consume this, and especially fructose, because fructose is primarily processed in the liver, whereas these others can be processed in the liver or in the muscles. And in any case, uh, if they're in the liver, they cannot get exported back out into the blood. They get sequestered in the liver forever because they can't go from glucose 6-phosphate back into glucose. The other problem with fructose, actually, is that it increases the activity of glucokinase. And that's, uh, if you remember back, we talked about glucokinase um, gets sequestered into the nucleus of the cell by glucokinase regulatory protein. So GKRP uh, takes glucokinase and it moves it into the nucleus of the cell and um, whenever you have fructose uh, being consumed it inhibits the regulatory protein so you actually increase the glucose consumption into the liver it pulls more glucose into the liver and so with a glycogen storage disease you have a twofold problem you have fructose being uh, converted into a downstream glycolytic product and you have an increase of glucose influx into the cell being converted into glucose 6-phosphate. And now just to clarify a little bit, I want to say that fructose first gets processed into fructose 1-phosphate. And fructose 1-phosphate, you can see from right here, is what actually um, stimulates glucokinase by stopping the regulatory protein. Whereas the fructose 6-phosphate, this product right here, uh, will inhibit the glucokinase. And that happens by it increasing the activity of the regulatory protein. So fructose doesn't go to fructose 6-phosphate. It goes to fructose 1-phosphate. So when you have a high fructose meal, you enhance glucokinase and de uh, decrease the regulatory protein. 